You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Brothers and sisters, seekers of Christ, this is Rombald Simeon. My book is The Bible, Love Letters from Your Father, Lecture Divina, and the Gospel of John, the love letters from your father, each chapter, every verse is a love letter from God our Father to his messenger, Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the message and the messenger because God sent these letters out through his own son in word, in action not just written but they were written down by the apostles the books that we call the gospels matthew mark Luke, and john now we're going through the, the book of john in lecture divina my meditations and analysis of these chapters we are now in chapter 19 and it's going very slow because we're only going to do two verses today 19 15 and 16 and those two verses because we're talking about the determination the execution of Jesus by crucifixion brothers and sisters let me say something personal to you as I do in this meditation Today, we're going to watch Jesus being brought to crucifixion. We're going to begin the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrow, the way to the cross, from the time at the Antonia where Pilate finally caves in to Caiaphas and the Jewish high priests, the coalition against Jesus, and the crowd, this mixed crowd of Jesus haters. Jesus haters. Not the ones who loved him, not the ones who saw him work miracles, not the ones who backed him up, not the diaspora, the form. Jews who acclaimed him on Palm Sunday, but a motley group of Jews who were brought there by the Sanhedrin, prejudiced on the side of the high priest and the Sanhedrin and the secret trial that was given to Jesus through the night. This is morning. This is like to us, maybe seven or eight o'clock in the morning. How come they were there, drawn from their beds or called specially to back up the Sanhedrin and Pythus and make it appear to, Kai, uh, to Pilate? that it was the people of Israel, the Jews of Israel, that were against Jesus. Not true. It was a fixed and selected crowd of Jesus haters. It was a mob. They all cried out, and we repeat it over and over again, our king is, is Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. Behold your king of the Jews, says Pilate. Will you crucify your king? I'm declaring him. He's the king of the Jews. The spiritual king, not a political king. It's Pilate who's declaring him to be Messiah. Strange, from a pagan. because 
in his judgment, he sees that Jesus is innocent of becoming a political king. He's not a seditionist, not trying to take over the kingdom of Israel from the power of the Roman Empire. His whole authority is from the Father. For this was I born, and why I came into the world. It's very clear to Pilate. This man is a religious leader, a fanatic maybe. He is innocent. In the end, he is innocent of any sedition and crime. I've even broken the law and had him whipped as if he were going to be crucified. Just let him go home and die. So, brothers and sisters, this horrendous incident is enough to break your heart. Jesus is dragged away, herded across Via Dolorosa from the Antonia to the garbage gate to Gehenna. Gehenna. What we say, hell, where they burnt the garbage. Outside the city of Jerusalem, because no blood was to be shed in the city. Dragged out like an animal. Herded across the Via Della Rosa. His blood already spilled. They ripped off the garment, the soldier's cloak that they hid on him, and every wound opened up and kept bleeding. He was not even sure he could go the whole way. If this doesn't convince each person who meditates on the crucifixion of Jesus, don't understand. When we see this and what we are going to talk about today, if you cannot weep for your sins, that Jesus did this to take our sins upon himself, to fulfill the will of the Father, that he pay the price. Someone human had to pay the price for human sin. Our sins are on him. He's not going to work any miracles. He's not going to escape. He's going to let the spirit of darkness, the word, the diabolical people who claim to be holy. Don't think that people only that are vicious, openly vicious, but they were vicious in a certain sense. They opposed him for three years. Working the miracle, saying he was the Messiah, disbelieving, having no faith in him. He proved over and over again, and he was going to prove now completely with the greatest miracle of all, his resurrection. They could kill him, but they could not contain him. Kill him, but not contain him. Because he truly was the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, as we see this whole point of the crucifixion, if you can't handle it, then don't look at this tape. Don't look at this video. Because we have to, and I, I will not describe it totally as bad as it is, because I cannot. It would be so horrible, you would have nightmares. But we're going to talk, talk about crucifixion. I say for yourself, in Lecture Divina and listening to Jesus and observing it, in connecting to yourself and being there as Jesus is being crucified in this whole scenario, you will never sin again. We will never sin again. Every night I have to say, 
Father, forgive me for what I did to Jesus. I'm sure that will be your spiritual reaction. You will never be the same person anymore. You will never sin again. Put yourself in the place of Jesus. Put yourself in his shoes. That's what I say. Put yourself in his body. Completely innocent. Doing all good. No one could accuse him honestly of ever sinning or doing a wrong action. Just coming to bring us all home to the Father, the Good Shepherd, the Son of God, dying for our sins, becoming not only the Lamb of God being executed innocently, but the scapegoat bearing the great burden of the world's sins from Adam to the last man to the last human bearing our sins and asking us to be the prodigal children and return to him to bring us back he carries the wounded the spiritually wounded on his shoulder. So, let us start by describing what the crucifixion meant. And here, that crowd say, No, not our king. We don't accept him as Messiah. And more than that, they don't accept God as their king. God himself, the Father, Yeho Jehovah, Yahweh, the Creator, the one who gave them all the revelation from Adam to Moses to the prophets and gave them Messiah, his own son. They reject God himself. The leaders, the chosen of God, become the most blasphemous atheists. We have no king but Caesar. What do I do, says Pilate, with this man of Nazareth, with this Jesus? Crucify him! Crucify him! Why? He's innocent. Let him go home and die. Crucify him! No answer. No dialogue. No explanation. No reason. Complete darkness of those in bitter hatred. Repeating the hatred of the leaders, of the elders. And Pilate says, You go and crucify him. I wash my hands of it. Of course, he cannot really wash his hands of it because he's conceding. He's still a collaborator. Go bring him to the cross. Crucify him. You do it. You be responsible. I'm not responsible. You can't do it. We can't do it. We can't say we're innocent. We're all involved Everyone who ever sinned is involved in the crucifixion of Jesus. So we have to make some kind of restitution, don't we? At least let's witness for him. Let's say we are sinners. We have been redeemed. We will proclaim him to make up for it before we die and see him face to face. We want him to say to us, good and faithful servant, we become your servant, we become your slave, we become your witnesses to the end. In every circumstance, we're not afraid of the people 
who deny Jesus. There are brothers and sisters. We want to help to bring them back to the Father. We want to be images of Jesus and help him do that. And we'll do what we can to all the people around us. Strangers, nobody's a stranger. We're all children of God. We're all human beings and we're all sinners. All right. So let's look into crucifixion and what it really means. Why crucifixion? Why couldn't the elders have stoned him before they brought him to Pilate? They have power to do that. They want to do that to the woman brought in adultery. Later they did it to St. Stephen. There was no restriction on that. It was official crucifixion that was forbidden. Political murder. So, in order to make you understand better, I'll give a description of crucifixion before I go more to the scriptures, to verse 15 and 16. If we look into the history of crucifixion, and you say, oh, what's so bad about it? We wear crucifixes. We're proud of it. We have Jesus on the cross. We have beautiful little images of that. Not so much the one that I have painted. I won't show it to you now, but I'll show you a copy of it that I have in the book. Jesus, his crucifixion, and his face, bloody, distinguished, decrepit, I hate to show it to you. I'll do it another time. It'd be a little too horrific. So, brothers and sisters, let's talk a little bit about crucifixion. What was crucifixion? Crucifixion was an, an, an oriental type of execution accepted by the Romans. Normally, they beat people with the rods and, the and cut their heads off with an ax when they wanted to get rid of them. But for some reason, they accepted a form of execution that was done by the Persians, the Parthians at that time we called them, and others, and even the Egyptians had developed, had used it. And where we have a cross, and people are arms spread out on this cross and nailed to it. Seems simple, doesn't it? Why did the Romans accept it? It was the most horrendous type of execution and torture that could have been devised. If you look at the history of the Romans, it was really accepted that we see it used so much was to stop the rebellion of the slaves of Rome and the empire. Spartacus. You hear the story of Spartacus. Go back to that in history. That was less than a century before Jesus in Italy, in Rome. Spartacus was a gladiator, a slave turned into a gladiator in a, in a, in a stadium meant to kill each other. Instead of them being executed, 
They were trained to be athletes, taught to fight animals and beasts, each other in all different ways, to be executed by their own fellow prisoners. Look into it. It's hard to describe. Among them was Spartacus. Spartacus was a great, unusual gladiator. And he led a rebellion of the gladiators from their training camps, from their like prisons, from their concentration camps where they were being trained to kill and to maim and to execute each other in all different ways with every kind of weapon, every kind of attitude. And the people would be in the stadiums and glow at the ways that people would try not to be killed. Then proclaim a victor and save him for another day. Well, that's easy to describe in such a short way. Spartacus rebelled. The gladiators in one camp, concentration camp where they were being trained, a training camp, like something like a boot camp of soldiers taught to be human devils escaped and they decided to fight the Roman army to be liberated to get out of Italy to go out into Asia somewhere to get off the boot formation of the land of, it, of Italy. But they needed others to help. So the people that were most desirous of liberty that would fight were other persons who were enslaved. So the slaves that were doing all the service work and had no rights to life and to happiness by the Roman population. They wanted to be liberated, and he liberated them, broke open their bondage, and formed a, a type of army where he could train them. It was a danger to the Roman Empire. It was a danger to the people who led the country, to the population. So they had their own army to stop them. But what happened? The Roman legion that was sent out to contain Spartacus was defeated by Spartacus. Defeated. And they, were, they liberated themselves and continued their journey across the Appian Way to Brindusium, the city of Brindisi, on the Adriatic facing Greece, where they hoped to cross over and continue their journey from Greece into Asia to liberation outside of the Roman Empire. Well, Rome at that time was being governed by three generals, the triumvirate, three men, three generals, among whom was Crassus, Crassus, who had sent this Roman legion from the Senate to contain Spartacus, but that army was defeated. So he took it upon himself to get the Roman legions and to follow Spartacus across Italy, lest he escape. They were not going to allow them to be escaped as slaves and the gladiators, led by gladiators and being trained by gladiators. Now, they had weapons. 
they had defeated the Roman Legion. More and more slaves across Italy were joining them. It was formidable. And if they got to the city of Brindisi, they could escape across the Adriatic and into Asia. So, Crassus, to make a long story short, Crassus went after them. The loot that Spartacus gained on his journeys across Italy, raiding wealthy homes and liberating their, their slaves, he had sent out for Asiatic pirates to get them across the Adriatic and to freedom to Asia. But it ended up these pirates betrayed him. They took the money and did not liberate them and put them on the ships. The Spartacus and the slaves were trapped at Brindisi, Brindusium, and defeated. Crassus and the Romans wanted to make an example of them that would never be forgotten and never has been forgotten. Crucifixion. They crucified the leaders and all of these rebels from Brundusium all the way back to Rome. I put them on crosses, torturing them, beating them, whipping them, and stripping them of all their humanity. Stripping them physically, kneeling them on crosses, their hands stretched out on the cross, their feet nailed to the cross so they couldn't move. So well they couldn't move. They could move pushing themselves up, trying to with their feet flat on the cross. So they could push themselves up and be tortured and torture themselves, trying to breathe, pulling themselves up by their wrists that were nailed. As long as they could breathe, these strong men slowly dying, naked. The birds of the air could come and pluck out their eyes. I won't go into all the detail. Leaving them on those crosses after they died to rot, to rot, that the animals eat their flesh, that them be completely eliminated, completely forgotten for 200 miles every five feet a man on a cross to be an example to all the slaves of Italy and there never was another rebellion in all their history. This is what crucifixion basically meant. We won't go into more terrifying details. This is what the Jews the chosen people, the elders, the leaders, said for Jesus. He says he's the Son of God. He says he is the, the King of the Jews. Crucify him. Let him be forgotten. Eliminate him. Make no delay. Do it now. Why we still have him here? He's dying, it doesn't matter. He's got to be eliminated. Completely eliminated. Not just rejection. Tortured. Ride the cross. Nail his feet to the cross in a bent position 
with his knees bent forward so he can push on it and try to lift himself up, pull himself on his wrists. Here's a little different thing that the Jews had. According to the book of Numbers, it was forbidden. It was the Holy Land in the law of Moses. It was the Holy Land. You could not have a person hanging from a tree. That was a, a euphemism for in this kind of death. The pole was a tree. The wood of the cross is a tree. But according to the Jews, to leave a person on a cross overnight desecrated the Holy Land. So, a couple of concessions were done for a Jewish crucifixion. You could put a lap cloth over the person's private parts so that people would not be horrified. Demoralized. That was it. Put a sign up on the top of the cross to see what the crime was so people would be learned. Be outside the cities because no spilling of blood inside of a holy city like Jerusalem. Be on the verge at Mount Calvary, the place of the skull, where in times before was the shrine of Moloch, Satan, the devil worshippers used to execute babies and children. Yeah. Sounds almost like abortions today. Innocent ones to be absorbed and eaten. Innocent people. Those who were God worshippers were being execu executed to Satan. Same thing being done under certain sense today. In our own country. Eliminate. Destroy. But when they they were not allowed to keep that person over night the crucifixion in Israel. It was against God's law. What did they do? Make sure that they died before night time. Break their legs so they couldn't push up. Break their arms so they can't pull to keep breathing so they died faster. That's why you see when Jesus died they did not break a bone in his body. They did it to the other two who were stronger than Jesus make sure they died faster but Jesus was clearly already dead so they put a lance into his heart to make sure he was dead and what would they do with the bodies cut them down and throw them into Gehenna into the place where they burnt the garbage. The incident, the valley of Hinnon, just below Calvary. The garbage dump of Jerusalem. Burn his body. Reduce him to ashes. Or let the animals eat him. Destroy him make his body disappear. These things were against the predictions about the Son of God, about Messiah. And you'll see it as we go along. 
how these things were not done to the body of Jesus. So, the Romans also had this way of saying, ride the cross. Push, pull up and push on your feet with your knees bent forward. I have a painting of that that I did myself that I use in the prison, in prison ministry. So, I hate to show you these paintings and pictures, but I use them in the prison to talk to prisoners and to say, Jesus, no matter what your sins are, come back to him. You still are children of God, and he wants to bring you home. Look at what you have done in your immoral lives and murders and all that and know that God will have mercy on you while you're living in this world. After you die, it's too late. Give up the ways of Satan. Is there hatred in the world? Brothers and sisters you say, no, I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. Well, if you love everybody, what good have you done for them in your life? Love means that you reach out and you give good to them. A good word. A good effort. What more good can you do but lead them back to Jesus? Save your brothers and sisters. Save them from a horrible end. Save them from not being converted. Not being turned back to God. That's what conversion means. Don't give yourself a fancy definition of conversion. Conversion means to change around. To go 180 degrees around in that circle. From what they were and what you are to what you can become. Become a child of God again. Become the Lamb of God so he can carry on his shoulders. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. Walk the way of Jesus. Do not underestimate the fact of your hatred. How many people really look go to confession and say I said that I loved and this is the worst lie you can give I said I loved someone but I cast them off I spiritually ultimately I spiritually crucified I took away their spirit I took away their hope I took away my love. If I'm connected to anyone, I have to show them my love. I have to show them the love of Jesus, that it's not just me loving, but the real hope is not to connect yourself to me, it's to, that I connect you to Jesus like I'm connected. So now we have the question of Jesus. Crucify him. Take him away. Get rid of him. Eliminate him. We don't want to see him again. Eliminate him. Here, Good Friday. From the time of the Seder meal, of the Last Supper, to this moment, how long is it? It would be from sunset on Thursday night to now, 12 hours later. 12, 13 hours, 14 hours, close to noon, after all these trials of Jesus, dragging him from one judge to another, having him whipped. So the final page of all the wars in history are wiped out 
the worst incident ever. Good Friday. Black Friday. Could not be blacker. It's good because Jesus pays the price on this day. The capstone of satanic hatred is on this day. Even in our own society, we don't shed a tear on Good Friday anymore. We don't meditate from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock of Jesus on the cross. It's another day of freedom. Another day of enjoying the day. Another day of forgetting what Jesus did for us. Of forgetting what we've done to him. In my youth, Good Friday was a holiday. A day where we meditated on the tenebrae, the darkness of the hour. We went to church and heard sermons for three hours describing the crucifixion of Jesus and the goodness of him in taking our sins upon himself and paying the price for us. Not done in our churches anymore, is it? Our churches have become banquet halls or group halls of enjoying each other's company and meeting people and saying, hi, how you doing? How's the children? I go to church. Sometimes I go before the statue of the Virgin Mary, the sorrowful mother, and sing to her. Tota poca es Maria, tota poca es Maria, et macula originalis non est in te. For the pilgrims, him. Show us the Savior. Show us the Savior. Let us stand at the cross like John the, the Evangelist, the Beloved, like Mary Magdalene, and weep for Jesus. Make the saints of the cross in the church where I go. Right after Mass, after people are just talking in the aisles with each other and greeting each other and shaking hands and talking about their children and their jobs and even say, oh, i got to get out and go to the ball game. You can't make the station of the cross. I don't see anyone anymore making the station of the cross. And I can't do it because they lock the door and throw you out. They can't wait. You bang the keys at the, on the bench. Make sure you leave right away. There's no time for Jesus. But remember, the time that we have is the time that we're living. We don't have any more time. Can you watch one hour with me? He says it to each one of us. Not just to Peter, the people at Gethsemane. He's saying it to us. What do the Jews do this day? They shut Jesus out. They shut the Father out. They shut Yahweh out. When Jesus died on the cross, what happened? The veil of the temple was ripped. A sign of destruction, of blasphemy. The high priest said it when Jesus said he was the Son of God. He ripped his garment. But God ripped that veil in the temple at the Holy of Holies. 
So, is there any difference with us, brothers and sisters? Do we shut God out? What have we done in one day? we went to sing for the Lord. Today, this day on Friday, as I go on my simple bike ride in the park, doing my exercise at 9.93, I've got to do some exercise. I can hardly walk. And I met a person there in the park. who told me his story and my witnessing responded to it and tells me his story of how he was abandoned in youth by his father. He never knew his father after the age of five and how he went around to another to the state where he was born looking for his father and as he grew up he was so feeling abandoned by everyone around him he didn't fit in he was a black youth in a southern state in Arkansas didn't fit in the schools didn't fit into the society persons avoided him saw him as a black person that he could be dangerous as a teenager they were afraid of him lived in a barrio I can say the word in these tenement houses where they were subjected to the gangs of others but he was not a gang member. And finally, he heard a minister, evangelist, he began to read the Bible, and he said for the first line, God made the world, and then God made man. The minister said, God made you. Why? We don't know. You're here. You know, there is a God, and he is your father. This man, Lewis, said to me, from then on, I knew I had found my father. Brothers and sisters, we're in the same boat whether your father stayed with your family or not was he ever your eternal father our father who was in heaven letters from your father the bible Jesus is your brother and he says I have a father this is what he told me brought tears to my eyes From then on, I've been seeking my father. I read the Bible. I try to see who my brother is, and that's Jesus. He's not only my savior, he's my brother. And he joins myself to him, and by me being adopted by my brother, I become really another child of God. I come, I'm convinced. That's in John's epistle. So what's the lesson? Do not shut God out. Now mentally follow him on the way to Calvary. The way of the cross is the way of salvation, of victory. It's a sad way. Go to Jerusalem. Do the way of the cross on the Via Della Rosa. EWTN. They show it on EWTN. The way of the cross. 
those stations in the cross are right in your church. Go and meditate on each station. From the first one, Jesus is crucified, condemned to death. All the way to that twelfth station, Jesus is crucified, dies on the cross. The cross is the key to salvation because it unlocks and reverses the gate to Satan. And we're all locked behind that horrible concentration camp we call this world if you don't have Jesus. The way of Satan. He promises us if we do not observe the laws of God and give him his time. Oh, we can enjoy. We can enjoy life. We enjoy the seven capital sins. Seven capital sins. The pride, pride of saying we're better than God. We know more than he does. And we don't pray to ask God what we're supposed to do. Jesus tells us on every page of, of the scripture. Follow his example. Be his image. Walk with him. Put your hand in the hand of the man who still the waters. That's the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have to reverse the way of Satan. The way of Satan, the seven capital sins. Pride, lust, anger, greed, gluttony, envy, sloth. Read on and do not give up. Do you walk with Jesus on the Via della Rosa to the crucifixion? At least be the person who died on the cross, the good thief. Admit you're a thief. You're stealing God's time. You're stealing the way of God. But don't give up. Keep hope. Faith, hope, and love. Hope. Do not give up as long as you have breath in your life. Because that's the only time you have. That's the only time I have only time we have. And don't worry about the darkness. Satan's world that looks so bright and so enticing, so making of money and trying to get along and try to be happy, try to enjoy life. Enjoy life. Because tomorrow you may die. giving all our time, energy, attention. And when you have hope, remember this. We're not talking you, telling you to despair, to be to become depressed, because the light of the world will not die. The darker the night, the brighter the light. Sometimes I feel the pressure of all this atheism and secularism and hatred that is around us constantly. <laughs> if you don't know what it is, just listen to the news. The people that do good are the ones that are attacked. The people that hate most are the ones who attack the ones who do the most good. Yes, you'll be attacked. This is not a bed of roses. Witness for the Lord, you will be attacked. They will react to you as they act to Jesus. You'll be ignored, you'll be attacked, but you will work miracles of people reaching to the Lord through you.
I have this grace from Louis and he says I'm so happy I met you to talk about the Lord because one more doubt has become light and truth and I say don't come to me go to Jesus go to Jesus he's waiting for you he's there he loves you don't depend on me I'm not good enough for you I'm just another sinner brothers and sisters let's just pray for each other we're in the same boat Jesus has no favorites he loves you like he loved his own mother like he loved Mary Magdalene like he loved the woman at the well and he liked the, the good Samaritan because he is the light of love he eliminates no one he came to bring us all home he came to bring you home not us you specifically he came to bring me home and I want to meet you there too with him and we'll all rejoice because we pray to see the light don't look at the darkness don't look at Satan don't look at the fake light that he gives remember his name is Lucifer the king of light who thinks he's the light of God but he is the devil Satan rebel of darkness Jesus cross his crucifixion is the key to light always bless him for it Lord praise and bless you because your cross you have redeemed the world you have redeemed me you have redeemed everyone who listens to you amen let's pray for each other and may God bless you Hello, God's Beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. To a production of WCAT Radio, please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up when knowledge takes flight.